Thales and the Birth of Philosophy, Part 1. In this video, we'll be looking at the following things. First of all, who was Thales? Secondly, what was his big life question? And finally, what was his answer? However, before I begin, I have to make one clarification. Namely, that when I talk about Thales and the birth of philosophy, I actually mean the birth of Western or Greek philosophy. I chose this title because it's shorter and more catchy, but at the same time, I also know that I didn't include and have to apologize to Confucius and to Buddha and King Solomon and a whole bunch of other non-Western or non-Greek philosophers. Back to Thales. Thales was the first of the so-called pre-Socratic philosophers which means that he lived before Socrates. Now, not necessarily all pre-Socratic philosophers lived, chronologically speaking, before Socrates, but in his case, he definitely did. On the right, we see a picture of him. This is Thales. And on the left, I have a picture of Greece and the western part of Turkey. And the interesting thing I want to show you here, that even though this is like long before Thales was even born, as we'll see, this entire region, including the west coast of Turkey, was under the influence of Greek culture. So even though he wasn't actually from Greece or Athens, like Socrates and Plato were, he definitely was Greek in the sense that he was culturally Greek. So what else do we know about Thales? First of all, he lived more or less or probably from about 624 to 546 BC in Miletus, Western Turkey nowadays. These days are approximate because we don't know with 100% certainty when exactly he was born or when he died. Now Miletus was actually a coastal city as we saw, but not only that, it was also on a ship trading route. And the cool thing about living on a ship trading route is that you get exposed to many different cultures and many different ideas of all the people that come and visit you. Now this is probably also how Thales became familiar with Egyptian geometry. Now some people have suggested that Thales maybe visited Egypt, which is not entirely impossible, but it's also not necessary because maybe he would have just learned it from the people from Egypt that visited Miletus. Now Thales, being a Greek, would have been aware of the Greek myths about the origin of the world and the gods. However, living in Miletus and being exposed to different cultures, he almost certainly became aware of the existence of many other myths. So besides Egyptian geometry, he might also have learned Egyptian mythology. And he might have heard the stories from Babylonians, he might have heard the stories from Jews, he might have heard stories from Romans, he might have heard stories from all over the known world, particularly the Mediterranean Sea. And this may have had an influence on his philosophy, because as we will see, his philosophy is not so much focused on trying to prove or disprove this or that particular origin story, but it's actually set up to be universal. Now, one thing about Thales you would like to know is that there are at least two really funny stories about him. The first story is that once he fell into a well, a well of water that is, because he was looking at the sky. So he was like walking around in a marketplace and he was looking up at the stars and the sky and he wasn't even paying attention to where he was going and he boom, he fell into a well. Another fun story is kind of a story of revenge because one day he was marked for being poor meaning he wasn't all that fancily dressed and he wasn't hanging out with all the rich people, but he was kind of like poor-ish. He had enough to survive, but not all that much more. When he became aware of this, he started to pay attention to the weather and to harvests. And one day he noticed a certain pattern and he predicted that the next harvest of olives was going to be huge. So what he did, he got as much money together as he could and he bought all the olive presses in the city, or at least as many as he could. And then by the time the harvest came and there were a lot of olives, he started to rent out the olive presses for a lot of profit. And that kind of made him rich and from that moment on he was never bullied again for being poor. However, the sad part is, no matter how cool these stories are, we cannot be 100% sure they actually happened. They may have been made up later because the earliest sources we have about these stories are from much later. However, there is one thing that we are almost certain about that it really did happen. Namely, he seems to have been the very first person in all of human history to accurately predict a solar eclipse particularly the one that happened on May 28th in 585 BC. 
Now, how exactly he did this is one of the mysteries of history, because as far as we know, the Greeks did not have the techniques available to them to accurately measure and therefore predict a solar eclipse. Nor do we have any written sources left behind by either Thales or anyone else describing how he managed to measure it. Yet, we are pretty sure that he did predict, since it is accounted in Herodotus. Now, not only was this a famous solar eclipse because Thales predicted it, it was also a famous eclipse because it happened in the middle of a war. Namely, Lydia and on the one hand here on the western half of what is nowadays Turkey and Media on the eastern half of Turkey going a little bit further to the east of this map. These two nations had been fighting for more or less five years and it didn't really go anywhere. But on May 28, 585 BC, they were going to have another battle. However, in the middle of this battle, when they were just preparing, the, the, the first couple of people were already fighting each other, then all of a sudden the solar eclipse, boom, made the entire battlefield dark. And this was obviously seen as a sign by the gods that they should stop fighting, which they thankfully did. Now, when it comes to finding out what Thales' big life question actually was, the first little obstacle we'll find is that Thales himself may or may not have written something, but if he did, and he probably did, but if he did, we don't have his writings anymore. They have been lost to us in history. On the other hand, we do have some idea of what he might have said, at least if we trust Aristotle and some other sources. Because Aristotle does talk about Thales and gives some examples of his philosophy and some of the things he supposedly said and even wrote. And if we take Aristotle and a couple of other sources seriously, it seems to be that he was apparently the first to systematically ask the question about the what of the universe. He was probably the first to ask this question because most of those who preceded him had religious questions and answers, particularly someone like Hesiod was asking questions like how did the universe come into existence and why and who created it and how did it all happen which are all very interesting questions of course but before all of this Thales was interested in the what of the universe what was it made of what did it do so as Thales was asking the what question he was basically asking the stuff he was asking about what kind of stuff the universe was made of or other words for stuff could be material, like materialism, or the Greek word, and I put it here in Greek letters, the RK, the RK that was responsible for everything we see. This concludes part one. In part two, we will see what the rules for finding the RK are, we will see what Thales' initial answer was, and finally, how Thales argued for his conclusion.